Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 15 of my 3D printed Star Wars R6 droid. I've done quite a lot on this already. It's got quite a lot of features, including spinning the head, utility arms that open. We've got a hollow projector that lights up and wiggles around. Um, obviously lots of sounds, music, and um, it drives along and it also converts from three legs to two. The plan is to keep this open frame design so you can see how the mechanics work inside. But now the fun really begins, that we've got all of the basics down. Have a look at the previous videos for how I did multitasking with the Arduinos and how all the mechanics work. So now we're really gonna pimp it out with lots of features. There's obviously lots of utility arms and things like the periscope to add, which we're going to do today. So here is the head assembly, and of course I can drive that around with the remote control. So the way this works is we've got a 3D printed NinjaFlex drive belt and that drives with a motor around the central hub. And then in the middle here, we've got a slip ring that takes the electronics up. We've got two bearings. So this head is quite stable. It doesn't wobble at all. Uh, it spins really freely and I can adjust the speed and all sorts of things. So in order to fit the periscope in, um, there's plenty of space, um, you know, in some of these head cavities. And the, that was the idea was to put lots of things in, but obviously we've got to avoid this motor. So any, uh, any linear lifting thing, has basically got to lift past this motor. Um, the motor's conveniently in the middle, so we can have the periscope itself, which is about as big as my fist, and that can raise up. It needs to go, obviously, I don't know, maybe 15 centimeters at least high. So the plan is to use a piece of eight mil stainless steel bar, which will conveniently fit here, fixed to the head, so as it spins, of course, it needs to avoid that motor and everything else. That can have linear bearings on that go up and down with a sort of pulley system, if you can imagine a pulley at each end with a toothed belt perhaps driven, that will slide up the periscope lifter and the actual bulk of the periscope will sit above the motor. So we'll avoid it as the head turns and then that can raise and lower and the, the periscope also needs to turn. So we'll need an additional motor to actually spin the top of the periscope. Obviously this bar is too long. It will end at the top of the head and probably have some brackets that fix it onto this. So it rotates around with the head. So let's have a look at some CAD for the main periscope body, which will get printed and then we'll sort out the mechanics. Here are some paper plans I got from the Worldwide R2DC Builders Club. Have a look at astromech.net. Um, all the dimensions are in, in Imperial, so I've had to convert the key ones to metric. And I am cadding up all the parts from scratch based on these dimensions. I haven't looked to see if there's any 3D printable things available for download. But like the rest of the droid, I have actually drawn it all from scratch in Autodesk 123 d Design. So here's the CAD for the top of my periscope, um, almost built to the same dimensions as R2-D2, but of course my dome isn't a dome, so the actual periscope on R2-D2 is far more slopey towards the back, and the top is a different shape because it has to match the dome profile, whereas my R6 is more of a cone, a very shallow cone-shaped head, so um, basically that profile on the top matches and doesn't match an R2-D2, so that makes my... Um, Periscope a lot squarer from the side, but I've put most of the other features on there the holes and various other things Obviously the top is a separate piece uh, We can just lift that off So we can see sort of inside there um, and what I've also done is gone and shelled out that lens So that it's hollow and that's going to be printed in a transparent material probably transparent ABS so we can diffuse light through it uh, now the lenses on the side appear to be black on R2-D2, so I'm not quite sure what to do with those. I don't know if light needs to shine through them or not. So I could just print and um, acetone smooth perhaps some ABS parts in black ABS, or I could stick something on the inside, uh, maybe airbrush black like some PET, the same sort of way I did BB-8 lens. Have a look at that video. But um, basically this is the main structure, so we can get this printed on the Lulzbot Mini and go and stick it in the head and see how it needs to move. Um, as I say, it needs to rotate, so initially the larger section will face the outside of the dome, of course, and this will face forwards, um, and that will then rotate all the way round, or at least do 180 degrees, probably, in one direction or the other, or to 90 degrees to each side. But let's get that printed and see what it looks like.
So here are the parts that I've printed, come out quite well. Obviously the lid fits on there. So this fits quite nicely in here, just at the back, so that's opposite the radar eye. And then it will of course hopefully pop up and then the head can turn all the way around whichever way. And then, whoops, and then the periscope can look around and it can perhaps turn in the opposite direction and do all sorts of things and then eventually pop away again and be neatly held inside. So I've now got some linear bearings for my rod which have actually got little ball bearings in and they slide really easily on the uh, eight mil bar there. So they will obviously facilitate that moving up and down and holding it parallel. But I do need a mount top and bottom as I mentioned before and I also need some means of driving it, probably with a belt. And I also need some means of positioning it so that I can see, um, well basically tell where it is and stop at the top and bottom. I've gone back to the CAD for my main head assembly here so that I can work on the bracket for making this thing work. So the gold part there is all of the head that exists. We've also got the motor in there so we can see what the clearance is. So um, what I've actually done is added this blue piece which is a bracket that holds a servo in that familiar looking hole with the screw holes either side and it also holds two bits of metal. So one is the 8mm um, shaft with the linear bearings on that I showed you and the other gold piece is going to be just a piece of 3mm steel and that's there just so that the assembly will stay straight and it won't rotate around the metal piece, the other one. So that will actually hold it in line. So um, I'm going to get this pr piece printed and mounted. It fits perfectly on the inside diameter of the head there. So we can mount that thing in and then we can see what clearance there is. And we can make a carriage that runs up and down and we can design a wheel to go on the servo which will turn and drive that carriage up and down. We also need a pulley at the top um, which I can of course acetone weld in once I've got the other pieces made up. So here's my piece of plastic that I've printed and I've put my two bits of metal in. I've got a 3mm steel rod in there and I've got my other 8mm steel with the two linear bearings on. So uh, on the bottom of this I've put a little ridge with the right contours to fit on the back of here and of course the inside slope here fits quite nicely on the inside there. So this will fit in perfectly like so and sit in. That will be solvent welded on. So that will sit there and then of course this will slide up and down and this thing will keep everything straight. So now I need to fit a servo in here, design a pulley that goes on it and a pulley at the top so I can drive up and down a carriage. And then of course my actual periscope piece will start at the top and slide upwards and of course I need to trim these as well so they fit flush with the top of the head. So I've printed some more parts, I've printed a pulley to go on my servo. And I've also printed a holder which is going to hold this slide pot. So um, unless the pulley's really, really big, um, the amount of turn in the servo isn't going to be enough to drive a belt that drives the axis to its full size. So the servos typically only turn just over 180 degrees, which means this would have to be about three times as big in diameter. So half the circumference would be the same as this length here. So uh, basically I'm going to use this slide pot to measure the position and I'm going to break that out from the potentiometer that's inside here, which is actually under this board. So I need to desolder that and run three wires out. Now you'll notice this isn't actually long enough either. So I need to do another dirty hack to make that work, which I'll show you shortly. But for now I'm going to desolder these three wires, break them out, and those will eventually attach to this pot, which will be mounted this way on the axis. I've desoldered the little board that's on there, and these are the three existing pot wires. That's held in with one screw, which I need to remove. Taking the top off the top of the servo, we also need to remove this little knob on the big output gear, which basically is an end stop which locks into the top. So that means that this will be able to go round and round multiple times, and it will then pay attention to the potentiometer that we put on the axis instead of the one inside. Okay, all of that wiring's done and the servo's reassembled. It now turns round and round and round continuously. And I've got these extra three wires in addition to the normal servo wire which are each end of the track and the black one is the wiper in the middle.
Right, I've got a few more pieces made, so I've put my pulley on, the big servo there, which rotates, and I've also made this support, which is just a piece of 6mm studding stuck in the hole in the end of the pulley, and the pulley is screwed onto the servo where the servo horn would normally go. And I've also installed a little pulley at the top here, so that I can run probably a piece of Ninjafex 3D printer filament around to make the band, and that will go around the big roller multiple times. Now I've mounted the pot for this at the back here, this slide pot in the little bracket that I made um, and as I said that isn't long enough of course to go to the entire length of the track which is about 120 mil and this is only about sort of 60 or 70 mil long so what I've actually done is attach this plate onto the actual carriage which goes up and down it's got those linear bearings in and um, what I've done is just put a little sort of fork thing at each end of the, ca of the carriage there so uh, when it's down it pushes the pot to one position and when it's up it pushes it up to another position, which actually isn't even the end of the extent of that pot. So basically it means that I can use this pot instead of this, the potentiometer inside the servo, and I can send the servo to a position, and it will carry on moving until it gets there. And of course it won't get there till the top fork hits the pot. So being as I only need to go up and down, and I don't care what's in the middle, this massive gap here, just means that I can extend the length of my pot essentially to the full length of the carriage. So on the back of this as well will be mounted the thing which actually holds the periscope and that of course needs to rotate and have some other gubbins below it so that can pop up and down so that's the next thing I need to make with another servo to turn it. So I've tied a piece of Ninja Flex around and I've just crudely coupled the ends with some uh, zip ties there and attached that to the carriage. Here we go, and I've just written this Arduino sketch on an Uno which um, just sends the servo up and down and it works mostly but some very curious things happen so there we go. So there's a bit of tension in the Ninja Flex at the end which is why it's struggling to go up. Then after a short delay it goes down and it kind of goes down and up and down again and I'm not sure why because basically that's just sending servo positions. But obviously something curious is happening because the uh, wiper isn't attached to the carriage, which is what it would be expecting, so I think that the servo electronics might be doing something weird. But it's actually quite a nice feature. It looks like it's not quite sure, and then it finally puts it down, which would be quite good when, if you can imagine the hollow projector going up and down, or the uh, periscope, I should say. So I just need to sort out that string tension. So it's happy going up. But apart from that, overall it works, and I'm pretty confident that I can um, at least command it to go up and down where I want. And there we go. Here's the next part of it, which are these grey sections, which is actually um, something I've cut up into three parts so I can print them flat on the bed. And of course the middle fork part there holds a servo, and I've got this ring part suspended above it so that I can actually shove a tube down there which is attached to the servo horn, and that will stop the thing wobbling, which is of course the top of the periscope. So if that's just attached to the servo horn, there's quite a lot of wobble on the output shaft of a servo. So this is basically another thing which will hold that shaft straight. And then of course the, perisco the periscope top sits straight on top. So um, these are screwed through into the same holes onto the main carriage part and that plate which is shown in green there which hits the pot wiper. Um, and this whole thing will move up and down. Let's just have a look at that um, as the servo turns. So they will of course move up and down with the linear bearings to make the periscope slide up and down. So let's get those printed and have a look and then we'll work on the final part which attaches that to the actual periscope top. Right, I've printed and attached those parts and they're just screwed on. There's two more screws to go in, but essentially this is fixed on the shaft so the whole thing goes up and down. And we've got that servo mounted in there and the hole in the top so that I can put a tube in. And then of course that will mount onto the servo horn which has got space to turn in there. So that will only do 180 degrees like a normal servo. And I've got some wiggle room on the screw holes to try and get that perfectly centered in the hole. So um, obviously we need a, a thing that attaches the periscope top to that. It's about that distance, so I've got space for some little features underneath, and that will be able to turn around as the periscope pops up. Okay. 
I've printed two parts. One is the servo piece there, which is screwed onto the servo and sticks through that hole. And the idea is the hole will support it to stop wobble. And the other piece is the pieces on the bottom here. So all that's uh, left is to solve and weld that on there. And then that will rotate, obviously only when it's up, because otherwise the frame is in the way. So I've left a hole there to run a wire in to put a NeoPixel in. I still need to do something about these lenses. Once I've done that, we can assemble the whole thing. So that seems to be working pretty well. Obviously you still have to get those lenses installed and the light installed and the top on. But it's looking pretty satisfactory and I've just got that running on a loop at the moment so that it goes up, has a look around and pops down again. So the periscope is now installed in the back of the head. There it is, you can probably just see it there. And if you can imagine, the rest of the head is going to have things like this in it as well. So it'll be fairly densely populated with this sort of mechanics as well as the body. And uh, it works pretty well, so I've put it onto my remote. I was going to have it on the stick on this side that's spare. So it turns the head that way. And up and down was going to be the periscope. But really it just needs activating, so I've just put it on this button here. So if I press this, up it pops. Has a look around, I put the NeoPixel in, and I put clear lenses on all three sides. And down it goes again. So it works quite well if you turn the head at the same time. So let's have a closer look at that. I've wired it into the 16 channel servo controller which I had in the head which is on I squared C from the body. I've got one of these in the body and one in the head and that's why it's quite important that this works like a normal servo instead of having other end switches or any other logic being required. Uh, that's basically why I hacked this pot in so I could just drive this servo like a servo um, and that makes it work. So let's have a closer look at that popping up. There we go, and of course it misses that motor. So the hollow projector fits quite neatly above it and the uh, head can turn round, just missing it. 